Hey y'all, my name is Forrest, and behind me is my tiny house located in Asheville, North Carolina, that I built over a year between 2020 and 2021. My partner, Sophia, and I live in this house, and we've been together in a wonderful relationship for the last nine years. And actually, last week, Sophia asked me to marry her. Um, so we've just recently got engaged, so that's really exciting. That happened when I was with her out in New Mexico at a Buddhist center where she's been in retreat for the winter. Hi! Hey. <laughs> Thanks for having us over. I'm sorry we couldn't oh, do it when you're here. Be there. It's so sweet to have you. <laughs> yeah, you have a gorgeous home. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and she's wrapping that up right now and she'll be home here in a couple weeks. I'm an EMT and I work with people who have um, co-occurring mental health and substance abuse disorders. I've been doing that work for about five years now and starting the fall I'm going to go back to school to get my master's in social work. Sophia is a musician and uh, the name of her project is Sophia Corinne. My tiny house is 10 feet wide by 28 feet long on a gooseneck trailer. My partner and I and Sophia built this house over a year with a lot of help from our friends. And it all got started with the tiny house building course from Wild Abundance. We are parked in the side yard of our good friend Lauren's house, who we met in the process of building this house as we were looking for a place to put it but built with board and batten siding that all came from a sawmill right down the road from where we were building it up in Marshall, North Carolina at Nanostead, tiny homes. Once we got into the house, we realized that we needed a transition space to welcome you in. And so I built this deck that's six feet by 10 feet and it's all bolted together so it can come apart. The feet are bolted so if, when we move this house we'll consider taking it with us. So the trailer, again, is 10 feet wide by 28 feet long, but given how heavy this house is, this is a fully built house. It's built just like any other house is built. It just happens to be on a trailer. So it weighs a lot. There are three axles, three 7,000 pound axles. And so that gives us a 21,000 pound capacity. We've never taken this to a scale, but we guess it weighs about 18,000 pounds. All right, y'all, let's go inside and take a look. Let me put the house back together. Can't keep putting it off forever. Cause I got time lost between my fingers. Welcome to my tiny house. It is 280 square feet, plus the square footage of the loft. And as we were designing it and creating the space, we really wanted something that was open and that each part of the house had a designated purpose. Next to me, built into our stairs are a chest of drawers where our clothes live. And then kind of behind me in the entryway, we have our closet. So we have all of our cleaning, supplies like our broom closet, our hanging clothes, and our blankets, along with our shoes and junk drawer. <laughs> we knew when we were designing the house that we wanted ample space to have hanging clothes. In the tiny house we were living in, there wasn't any, and we knew that was something we wanted to do differently. And there are two rods, one for each of us. As we enter the house, we have a place to take off our shoes and to hang our coats and to put our keys for our cars. And we have a full length mirror right here. So as we are leaving the house, you can check yourself out. <laughs> and off of the entryway, this hallway is our bathroom. We knew we wanted a functional bathroom space. And to get that, we went with this Ikea sink that is horizontal. You see a lot of these in tiny homes. 
In order to meet code, you have to have some ventilation in this space. We considered the option of doing a constant air exchanger. We didn't have the budget for it, so we just went with a regular window. The other piece is the Nature's Head composting toilet is constantly pulling air from inside the house outside. So it's got a fan that's running all the time, so the toilet doesn't smell at all. Behind me is the shower, and we wanted a full shower. When we were living in a tiny house, as we were designing this one, you couldn't move your elbows. And so we really wanted a full size shower. This shower, the tiling of it, the creating, the different levels to it was incredibly challenging. It was my least favorite part of the entire build. I really wasn't prepared. YouTube did not prepare me for what I would embark on. The reason for the funky levels is that the wheel well from the trailer juts in to, to this point trying to maximize all the space in this house, we created a storage area underneath for our towels. A special piece to the shower is that some of the stones that line the base are from a beautiful stone beach in California that Sophia grew up going to and holds a dear place in her heart. So we brought some home to include in the floor of our shower. One of the downfalls of this design initially was that it lacked adequate storage. There's a little shelf inside of our vanity, but other than that, we really didn't have space for our toiletries. So something that I have done just recently is inset these shelves here to give us that space. It's inset into the wall, it, just a two by four wall, so it didn't intrude into the space. So Wild Abundance offers a tiny house and natural building course. I was lucky enough to be one of the two tiny houses that was built. When the class finished, we had all of the exterior of the house framed and we had a few of the windows in. And that was done in a week with about 20 people, an instructor, Jeremy, who runs NanoSed. That was, that was August. I was thinking we are going to be done with this house and moved in by January. And that was just totally naive. I had never built a house before. The project took one year and it was a, a year of working on the house full time, maintaining my job part time, and Sophia doing a lot of support around the whole thing. She was working, providing for us, allowing me to not be working full time her working on the house with me on the weekends, a real collective effort and a lot of friends um, helping out along the way. My cost for, for this home was around $45,000. A big chunk of that is the trailer. Other pieces that increased cost were associated with the certification that I was going for. As a result, I needed to contract out some things to license contractors, mainly electrical, plumbing, and HVAC. Paying somebody else is a lot more expensive than paying yourself to do those things. And so that was about another $10,000 in cost to contract out. And the rest, that 25 was materials. And that doesn't include my time, of course. But I mean, upon finishing the house, the house was immediately insurable and valued at around $100,000. It's, it was a worthwhile investment for me to make. If something catastrophic had happened, day one, we're moving it off the build site and it gets in a wreck and it all gets destroyed, I would have been paid for my year's labor. So back into our living room, we wanted to create a place that could be cozy and that we could sit around in a circle. This also plays into the multi-leveled design element to the house. Here is our couch which inside this full space is storage. And in that storage area, we've got our bulkier kitchen equipment. So our couch turns into a full-size bed. The cushion is a mattress pad that's folded over three times to create the space and then it doubles as a mattress for when it turns into the bed. Beside me, we also have our record player and our speaker. This is hardwired into the record player and a Bluetooth speaker. Just in the space, you can just hook up 
our phones to it and listen to music and it fills the space really well. Another important thing that we needed to include as we were designing this house was a place to store musical instruments that was climate controlled. Sophia's a musician by trade and we have a lot of instruments. And so we created this storage space right here off of our living room and in the main climate of the house so that we could store our instruments safely. But the reason our kitchen is so elevated is because as we were designing the house and looking at what other people have done, what we felt was lacking was adequate storage. People maximize storage all the time in a tiny house and we've done the same, but what about gear, camping gear, winter sweaters, skis, whatever it might be. And so we need to create a space to hold them. And that's why we created this tiered elevated kitchen. Underneath is 33 inches of height that's accessible from the outside of the house and the full width, eight feet deep by 10 feet wide, 33 inches high storage compartment. There is, of course, storage in these steps. Down here, this lower step is our dry goods storage. Everything is nicely labeled. Also, a later addition to the house was this cubic mini stove. This little stove cranks. You can heat this space so easily, and especially in the winter, it's so nice because it's such that, that warm, dry heat that's really comforting. You can curl up on the couch and read a good book. As we head up into the kitchen, cooking is a really important part of Sophia's and my partnership. So we wanted a space that supported that and that we could do it together and that would be a joyful activity. Something that we saw in a lot of tiny homes were just burners. And we knew that we wanted a full stove, a full range, and an oven because I love to bake. While a toaster oven is very handy, it's not what I wanted. <laughs> so we went with this gas range. Anytime you're gonna have gas in such a small space, you need to ensure adequate ventilation. And so with that, we have very powerful vent hood. These countertops are made of red oak that came off of the farm where I grew up. And I wanted to keep the live edge on it. I really liked that look. In these drawers, we have all of our cooking utensils, our bakeware, our cast irons, and our any utensils that we would need in the top drawer. And in this cabinet is our pantry. So in order to fit this space, we had to take Ikea cabinets and retrofit them. All the drawers that you will see in this kitchen are from Ikea, but the base cabinets that they go into. I made some of them, some I modified. And I also built right here in this space place for our cutting boards. We knew we wanted a laundry machine. We didn't wanna be doing all, our, all of our laundry by hand or going to the laundromat. I designed a cabinet that was supposed to fit and hide the washer dryer, this specific, this LG um, combination washer dryer. Only once it arrived did we learn that the dimensions that they advertise do not include this, this front part of the dryer. So this entire bulge, this like four or five inch bulge in the front are not included in those. They also do not include the feet, the stabilization feet. And so what was going to be a nicely tucked away dryer is now out in the open. Overall, this has worked really well for us. We use it as a hybrid to wash our clothes and we have a drying line out there if we've got a lot of laundry to do because the wash dry cycle on a quick speed runs for two hours and 40 minutes. If you run it on normal, it's almost a four hour cycle. So that is tedious. The biggest piece of advice that I would give is to ensure that you get the warranty. LG will warranty this for seven years and it has already broken twice in the first year of use. So that warranty has already paid for itself. 
And on this side of the kitchen, we start with our full size fridge. Again, something that was really important for us in this design phase was not living out of a mini fridge. We cook a lot. We like to go to the farmer's market. We have leftovers, like a mini fridge just doesn't do it. An issue that I came up against is that, again, as advertised, said you could change the orientation of the door and you cannot. And so I had to cut a hole so that the door can open to our fridge. <laughs> Underneath our drink station, we have our trash can. Since we weren't going to have a dishwasher in this space, we wanted a large deep sink to do dishes because we're going to be creating a bunch of dishes. Two people live in here full time. You're doing dishes multiple times a day. This gave us the flexibility to not lose the productivity of a sink if there were dishes that needed to still be done. It was really important for us to bring as much natural light into this small space as possible. There are 11 windows throughout this 280 square foot tiny house. Not a single place do you look and do you not see outside. Behind me is also our heating and cooling mini split. When we were about four months anticipating, and at this point had a good sense that we were actually four months from completing the house, not diluted in, in how long it was gonna take, Sophia put together uh, basically an ad for us on, on Facebook. Um, us as a couple, showing our progress in the build, letting a potential person know what we were looking for in a parking spot. And we put it out on homesteading Facebook groups and just to the general like Asheville based places because we knew this is where we wanted to be. But then this woman named Lauren who owns this property reached out to us. We got together with Lauren for dinner and really hit it off, talked about a lot of the important things in terms of communication styles and a political orientation and like things that would come in the way of a relationship, especially if our home is gonna be on their land and felt like we were a really good fit. And so with that, Lauren ran all the utilities to this pad. She put in a retaining wall and created a level space, drainage, and everything that we needed. We have a really prime location. It meets all of our needs and then some in terms of proximity to Asheville, in terms of zoning limitations, all those things um, were pretty synchronous. And so we were willing to pay a little bit more. And so we were paying $650 a month and that included utilities. That has changed because Lauren is no longer living here on the property. And so I'm doing all the maintenance for the property, property upkeep and that house upkeep. And so that has cut our rent significantly. Now we pay $400 a month. In this rental market, I mean, in Asheville, you're paying $800 for a room in a shared space. We are really lucky and have really benefited from this place. This transition behind me is into the gooseneck part of the trailer. We wanted a space that could be used for yoga or exercise or to have a dinner party. Our table, again from Ikea, typically sits two people in its usual setup. But when pulled out into this room, we can fit six around it. And admittedly, six people overwhelms the space. It's a lovely thing that we can still offer. So over here, we have our meditation space and our shrine. Sophia was raised Buddhist and is a Buddhist practitioner. Also in this space is our office. And at the other end of the house, you can see our loft bedroom up above our living space and our bathroom. At the head of the bed, we can both sit up and not feel claustrophobic or feel like we're gonna be hitting our head on the ceiling. Another important piece of a loft in a tiny house is ensuring that you have ventilation underneath your mattress. This mattress is on a 
on slats um, that give an inch of air ventilation underneath it. And that ensures that it doesn't mold because mattresses will mold if they're just on the ground. The final piece that I'll mention with this loft is that in order to meet code that we were building to, we had to have a egress window um, in case of a fire, something was preventing us from exiting through the main part of the house. So this is a an awning window that I flipped on its side and opens outward so that in the case of an emergency, we could escape out the window. This house is a park model RV on paper, and we were able to get that certification through NOAA. They provided the inspections um, throughout the process of our build. It was challenging when Sophia came back from tour just a couple months ago. So she was gone for a lot of this year and I've been living alone and there was a readjustment period. And it's something that I wouldn't have thought of because we had lived so harmoniously in this space before, but it took some time to get back there. And, but, and by the time she left for this last little stint that she's doing right now, it was great. We were back into that rhythm, but it is a rhythm and it's something that you, that you have to, you really got to work with. Down the road, if we want to have a family and we need a bigger space, moving this to that space and it being an in-laws cottage, there's been dreams about turning it into a music studio or a retreat cabin or their kind of, or an Airbnb that pays for our mortgage. There are a lot of ways that this is only going to benefit us in the future, however it ends up being used, but not gonna sell it. <laughs> Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.